Every week, the U.S. government drops 15 million flesh-eating flies over Panama. No, that's not a typo. And yes, Panama's totally fine with it. Or maybe they just haven't noticed yet. Either way, the U.S. has been doing this for years. And not only is no one stopping it, they're doubling down. So grab your coffee and don't forget to hit the like button before you get distracted. And let's dig into why America is mass producing flies that eat living tissue. It all starts at a place you could call a fly farm, factory, or if you're into horror aesthetics, a bug plant. The original one opened in Mission, Texas, capable of cranking out 200 million flies a week. These aren't your average house flies. These belong to the Cochleomaya hominivorax family, better known as screwworms. And their thing? Eating live flesh. Back in the day, scientists from the USDA fed these lovely creatures a ground-up combo of beef and blood. Sounds like a scene from a vampire's steakhouse. But beef got expensive, so they switched to cheaper cuts. Horse, whale, pork, cow lung, even nutria, a rodent invading Louisiana at the time. By 1962, the mission facility was going through 108 tons of meat and 10,000 gallons of blood every week. Imagine trying to FedEx that. Airlines refused to touch the cargo. It smelled too awful until workers started masking the stench with cologne. Really? That plant shut down in 1981 and fly breeding moved to Mexico, then Panama. Today, the operation runs out of an old sugarcane plantation 20 miles from Panama City. The diet's been updated, less Texas chainsaw, more budget blender. Flies now feast on a slurry of powdered blood, milk, eggs, and cellulose. It looks like raw sewage, but hey, they're flies. They're not picky. Inside this facility, 115 people work 24-7 to produce 20 million flies per week. It's a precision operation. Rooms are dialed in to simulate specific body temperatures. Larvae hatch in spaces heated to 102 degrees Fahrenheit, just like inside a warm-blooded host. They're moved, fed, grown, and eventually counted using modified pill machines that dispense them into trays stacked 50 high like some sort of macabre bakery. Then comes the big finale. Two days later, full-grown flies are chilled into a dormant state. Zombie flies, essentially. Then loaded into what looks like a washing machine, packed onto planes and released mid-air across Panama. Modern planes have automatic fly dispersers, spinning out bugs from the aircraft belly like it's raining flesh eaters. Back in the day, they used to literally toss cardboard boxes out the hatch. Sometimes the boxes didn't break, and the flies just died inside. Not quite what the USDA had in mind. Oh, and the planes fly low, under 1,500 feet, so the warmth from the air wakes the flies up just in time to buzz off and begin their mission. A mission to save the world, by the way. These screwworms are all sterile males, and by overwhelming native populations, they stop the spread of this parasite without using pesticides. But still, imagine being the intern whose job is fly counter. Anyway, now you know why we're bombing Panama with bugs. You're welcome. Don't forget to like the video, unless you're too grossed out to click. Grossed. Now that the flies have buzzed off into the jungle, let's take a closer look at the villains of this story. Cochleomaya hominivorax. Sounds fancy, but they're basically zombie blowflies with metallic green-blue bodies, big red eyes, and a hunger for living flesh. After mating, the females lay their eggs in open wounds of warm-blooded animals. Yes, even the tiniest scratches will do. Then the larvae hatch and start eating. Alive. Once they're full, the maggots drop out of the wound pupate in the soil, and voila, another generation of flesh-eating flies is born. It's like something out of a horror movie. 
only very real and very painful. These flies were once a nightmare for American farmers, killing millions of dollars worth of cattle annually. Their range stretched from Florida to California, targeting not just livestock, but also deer, squirrels, pets, even people. If it's warm-blooded and breathing, it's on the menu. But notice I said were, because this isn't just a tale of insect horror. It's also one of the greatest pest control victories in history. Back in the 1950s, American ranchers had had enough. They pushed the USDA to do something radical, wipe out the screwworm fly. And the solution? Release sterile males. No joke. It started in 1951, when scientists dropped the first batch on Sanibel Island, Florida. At first, nothing. But then, when they tried again on Curacao, something incredible happened. The flies vanished. Poof. Gone. The sterile males mated with the females, but no viable offspring were born. With no new flies, the population crashed. By 1966, the US officially declared victory over the flesh-eating fly. But maintaining that victory was the real challenge. The sterile male barrier along the US-Mexico border? Not enough. They had to push it south, all the way to the Isthmus of Panama, the narrowest part of Central America. Why? Because it's cheaper to protect the bottleneck than guard 2,000 miles of US border. So today, the US spends $15 million a year dropping flies over Panama. Sounds expensive, until you realize it saves nearly $800 million in agricultural losses annually. Not bad for a fly bomb. And it's not just planes. The operation includes an entire surveillance army on motorcycles, horses, and boats, scouring the jungle for rogue larvae. One mistake could undo decades of work. All this effort is focused on a tropical fly that doesn't even live in the US anymore. Why? Because prevention is cheaper than reinfestation. It's a textbook case of nip it in the bud, or in this case, in the maggot. And just wait until you hear how they sterilize the flies. Let's just say it involves gamma radiation, no lead underpants required. Hit that like button for science, survival, and apparently, fly factories. So here's the genius plan. Scientists discovered that female flesh, flies only mate once in their lives. Just once. That means if you sneak a sterile male into the dating pool, she's basically done. No baby flies, ever. And if you flood the skies with these sterile guys, the whole population crashes. Simple, elegant, diabolical. That's exactly what we're doing right now. Breeding flesh flies in factories, zapping them sterile, and airdropping them into the wild like tiny, winged saboteurs. Now, sterilizing flies sounds easy, until you realize no one knew how to do it when the idea was first pitched. Credit goes to Edward Nipling, an entomologist with the USDA and a guy who had beef with bugs since his Texas farm boy days. He dreamed up the sterilization plan, then got sidetracked by a little thing called World War II. When he came back to his flies, Nippling remembered something important. Radiation fries cells. So scientists started running fly larvae through X-ray machines, tweaking radiation levels to get the perfect balance. Sterile enough to stop reproduction, but still sexy enough to attract a mate. And it worked. But before you start thinking, great, let's sterilize every fly in existence and be done with it. Hold up. The flesh flies range covers all of South America. That's a massive area. You'd need dozens of fly factories, fleets of planes, international permits, global cooperation, and billions of dollars. You know, the kind of stuff humans are notoriously bad at organizing. Also, if you're imagining a fly apocalypse, if one of these labs leaks, don't. Even if sterile flies escape, they can't reproduce. They'll buzz around for a bit and die out quietly. The real nightmare if the barrier, the protective buffer in Panama, fails. Take the Florida Keys, for example. 
Back in 2016, locals noticed deer swinging their heads around like they were possessed. Then the wounds showed up, big horrifying holes down to the bone. Surprise, it was flesh flies again. Thankfully, scientists acted fast. They dropped sterile males on the islands and the outbreak was contained. But nobody knows how the flies got there in the first place. That's the unsettling part. And while we've beaten these bugs in the US, many parts of the world aren't so lucky. There are two types of flesh flies. New World, the ones we've dealt with, and Old World, still terrorizing animals in Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and beyond. Even South American countries like Uruguay have considered eradication. But the logistics? Brutal. If just one country tries to eliminate them, it's pointless. Neighboring flies will simply fly in and ruin everything, just like uninvited party guests. You either do it continent-wide or not at all. The US got lucky, geography helped, and well, so did money. Because if there's one thing that kills bugs fast, it's cash. You made it to the end, you officially owe me a like. See you next time.